Welcome to the Dadvocacy Podcast. I'm Ryan. I am Tristan. And uh, this is episode six of season two. Weird. I don't know, man. The, the more we do this, the more it's like we did another, you know, and, yeah. and you're like, holy crap, we're still going. We're still doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird. still a thing, huh? Um, <laughs> speaking of things that we're still doing, we're still doing COVID, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's around. It's uh, happening. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you got kids in school, you're more than aware of it because half the teachers are gone. But it's it's really weird. Like, I mean, I'm I'm not like a naysayer per se. No, I'm not a denier. Not, I had it. <laughs> not everything is COVID, clearly, right? But like, it's real. I, I'm not scared of it at all. Especially the newer variant. I don't know. I'm kind of just like in the point now. It's like, okay, there's, you know, last year with Delta, at one point there was like 120 people in the hospital at one time. Right now, with we have more cases every day than we did during Delta. And there's only 20 people in the hospital. I tried to make it quiet. <laughs> Sorry. I know. And they're cracking, there are... cracking cold ones or so, something. Over hey, man. <laughs> me and my ginger beer to make this happen. It's no big deal. <laughs> I'm so fancy. But no, I mean, like the cases are down. So I'm like, at this point, I'm like, all right, we're not overwhelming the healthcare system. That was what we wanted, right? Yeah. At, at, to begin well, with, we didn't want the deaths. Okay. We took care of that. Okay. Well, we don't want to overrun the healthcare system. Well, guess what? We're, we're there now and we have therapeutics on the back end too that we're not even using weird and now we have a buttload of cases we're not overwhelming the healthcare system well, but I mean, like we still need to be afraid and i'm like it, it's like the cold and the flu of every year prior which went rampant and crazy right yeah um i mean like you know i, I had the new variant also one it was it was like the worst it was it wasn't the worst flu i ever had but it was pretty it was nasty okay yeah. but i mean it wasn't awful well and the thing about this too like that with the Omicron, like, I mean, we're not scientists by any means, but like, I think everybody at this point kind of is or can claim, claim that they're scientists because we're getting away with Dr. Fauci saying mm-hmm. that he's a doctor. Um, yeah, that's my dig on him. Sorry. No, I want to say more his wife being a doctor. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> or Dr. Jill Biden. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I, 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 no, I understand she actually has like, I, I think she actually does. She carry. has her PhD in education. <clears throat> mm-hmm. She's a, she's got a PhD in education. She gets it. She's not a doctor, doctor. She's PhD, doctorate I, in education. Yeah. So she can teach. She just can't practice medicine. No, she, she could tell you like diction is correct like, or not, but you're not going to go see her if you have the flu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, so like with COVID, like, <laughs> cause Please continue. numbers are going through the roof, but it's also cause we're freaking testing like crazy, whether you have symptoms or not. Yeah. Everybody's just being told to test. Like, you just need to go test. You don't know. You could be passing it. And you're like, okay, but if if you could have it and you're not, like, symptomatic, okay, cool. That's a good thing, right? I if, I feel like it's much like the smallpox parties of the early 70s. The chicken pox parties, <clears throat> mean? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, chicken yeah. pox parties, right? Like so smallpox dude, parties is a totally different story. <laughs> those were sad parties. <laughs> That's awful. The polio party. All right. <laughs> like, no. Sweet. <laughs> the comet's coming. But like, are we, yeah, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. messed up. That's okay. No, but I mean, there was an actual, I remember watching, because um, I'm that old, the Brady Bunch. Yeah. And their chicken pox episode. I remember that. Dude, and I mean, like, YouTube, if you haven't seen it, it's amazing how light they thought of chicken pox and how we think it's super deadly now. Charles in charge was the same way. <laughs> yeah. And nobody cared. They were yeah, like, well, cared. chicken pox, go have your friends come over, spend the night. We're going to have a party. And it's, it's a herpes and that's what it strain. Was, yeah. And you're basically telling everybody to go get herpes. Sweet. I mean, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Look, I broke out. <laughs> Sweet, man. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> but then, then like as me as a kid who got chicken pox and then by the time I hit fifth grade and then I got shingles. I've never had chicken pox. Legit, never. That's pretty I've cool. I've been around people that have it. I babysat kids that yep. had it. You might just be like immune to it. Like Super. you have the antibody and you're good to go. I'm hey, that's an amazing. Me. That's an amazing thing, right? Yeah, amazing. We can it have antibodies happens. for things, and so know. that's where, like, with all this, the, I'm not surprised that like another strain in winter in northern hemisphere is like running rampant because guess what? It's dark all the time, and we're freaking vitamin D deficient. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. And, and I mean, it's that time of year. Dude, I use a happy light. Do you use a happy light? What's a happy light? The little, the little uh, mimic sunlight lamps that like increase your vitamin D production. I've got a grow lamp above my bed. That's pretty cool. I mean, is that, it, but, it sounds weird, but I bought it for, because. Um, Cause so, I also do red light therapy too. Dude, yeah. Well, I've got the sauna, right? Yeah. And then I've got uh, two red lights above the bed 
And in the center, I wanted a full spectrum one because yeah. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So they're all so connected full to one spectrum piece. is yeah, like is that what that is? Hap- it's I guess yeah, it's close enough. But so you're saying it's I just have it behind my I have it behind my computer monitor, and I just have it on when I'm like working throughout the day. It doesn't hurt oh. my eyes because it doesn't really have a crap ton of the blue light. But like, dude, that's smart. I should totally move mine. Totally like. Dude, it's legit. I use them all the time, and like, I take a buttload of vitamin D. I take like four times the recommended dosage. Like, here's my thought: <laughs> you pee it out. Like, I mean, come on, let's be Dude, honest. I, I take fifty thousand IU's a day I'm with about, vitamin I'm K. Around, I'm around like twenty five. It, it's one little pill. Okay, they're so they're so stupid little. Yeah. It's amazing, right? But vitamin K to increase update or the uptake. But I'm thinking, dude, if you've got your full spectrum behind your monitor, right? Yeah. the The next step is getting a red light therapy for your nuts. <laughs> It's proven to increase testosterone. Really? Yeah. In men, it, it across the board. All right. So here's so a game changer. I, I'm being real. Like, here's a, I mean, here's like, a game changer, right? Where do we do most of yeah. our thinking? Long, in the long thinking. In the bathroom. Where's a great place for the red light? Right in the bowl, but that'd be nasty after no. a while. Where is it? You think of the ceiling? Right above you. Dude, for showers, that might be really well because it reflects off, refracts, refracts off of the water droplets. Yeah. Or just if you're going to be sitting somewhere for a long period of time and you want to get your red light. We are smart. In, Throw that baby above your toilet, man. <laughs> Hang out. There you go. Get your, get your, uh, yeah. So it's got to be so many, um, NMs, yeah, to penetrate properly. And, and I know mine do, and they penetrate properly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, much like my sauna, there's, I love saunas though, dude. There's a big, I mean, dude, the Swedes and the, the Nordic countries do a, they were onto something when they invented the sauna. Like, they also invented, Freezing in the water. Yeah, freezing baths and then like whipping themselves with birch branches too. Something about it increased circulation. Well, I think whipping yourself with anything would cause the, <laughs> the blood to come to the surface and increase That's it. Right. So. Yeah. But they are like notorious for having the lowest blood pressure, like low, pre- low blood pressure. Wow. Like, I wonder why that was so hard to say. I think low blood are... pressure. There we go. It's the next variant. Yeah. It's the, the tongue twister variant. <laughs> <laughs> so, our president has had it the entire time <laughs> did i say that yeah don't did get I me started there? on what he said yesterday oh dude so stupid oh so Shit. stupid so, he's, uh, so happy so martin mad. luther king jr we went week week yeah time frame yep um i thumped the mic i learned Sorry. some really interesting facts about him that i'm not going to repeat because most people have no idea about about it at all well apparently he, i mean he's not the greatest person alive <laughs> he he had um extra yeah, he, yeah. Um, he, I think that was known, though, right? No, I mean, honestly, he, I didn't know until I found extra out. Extra marital affairs, the strippers and the, yeah. the prostitutes, and um, at one point, yeah. yeah, and he actually did. He did speak about violence, but he spoke against it also. Um, yeah. He uh, he spoke more against it than he did for it. Intriguing People, person. And, mm-hmm. and the one quote that they try to justify violence, I must say, they, I mean, like the Black Lives Matter movement when they yeah. were using it was taken completely out of context because he was almost using it as an example of what not to do. And that's where I'm like, isn't that God. what people do with the Bible? But people do that all the yeah, The Bible. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's, be real. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. We, we so, do stuff. No. And that's, I mean, Martin Luther King did, did some great stuff, but like, I mean, I think we're all human. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cast stones. Oh, no. Cause I mean, we've all done stuff in our well, past. I mean, right. And biblically, let's look at, look at, let's look at uh, Paul. Yeah, dude, Paul's a bad dude. Right? And he was a super bad dude, but he wrote most of the books of the Bible. So yeah. if we're going to go that route, like we we have to, I think we talked a long time ago, but we have to assume and we have to know that, hey, if I can grow, other people can grow also. Yeah. And you've got to give yourself to or other people the same accord you would yourself. God doesn't always call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So like, why why can't he choose people that may well, he, not look like the best to, he always to carry out his people work. that are the lowest yeah it, traditionally i mean well, he's, jesus he's, wasn't that i mean he was born in a hole in the ground for goodness sake but like carpenter's son yeah i mean look at mary and i mean you can go through that whole lineage oh my, that's yeah. good, biblical that's a that's a whole nother podcast but um you know. but really if you think about it it's, it's amazing so when you're at your lowest is typically when you start doing your greatest things mm-hmm. which is crazy i, I, mean, I to think, think that's where we've kind of landed with this like we I don't were, want to say we were at our lowest, well, but I, I mean, think we, we had been through some, <laughs> been through some things, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. And we've ended up, I think being able to, this is just two dudes walking through life and having conversations about what we encounter. Holding hands. Not necessarily. On that yellow brick road <laughs> with a bunch of midgets behind us. <laughs> Holding hands. With popsicles. <laughs> at one time I wanted to hire a bunch of midgets to dress exactly like me to go down the streets in Sherman. That'd be, be, be flipping amazing. <laughs> Just me and my crew. 
you know playing uh it's a hard knock life oh that'd be so bomb <laughs> that'd be so- i'm a weird dude i yeah, just the, how i am the lollipop guild mm-hmm. me too <laughs> I'm, I can see it in my head right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I totally can. <laughs> hey, so I was taking a shower, listening to some. That's a good um, thing. I'm glad you shower. Yeah, every <laughs> once in a while, I like to make sure I get clean a little bit, you know, just between my toes, though. Okay. Um, listening to. Toes. Huh? What, what's that boy band? Which one? The, the English Bunch one. Of... It's like the brothers. Oh, it's not the Jonas brothers. No. They're not English. No. Uh... Uh... Whatever. They, there's a song called Summer talking. Love, right? Sure. <laughs> you <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> Just a lot of boy bands. You go in sync or Backstreet Boys, I'd be able to oh, they bust them up. But like, yeah, you go outside of those two. I'm like, nope. They're English. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about. But it's, there's a song called Summer Love. And I was, I was okay. thinking about like summer vacations as kids. Yeah. Outdoor school, stuff like that, right? Um, in the time that I went to, um, we camped out on the coast because we had a uh, memberships to coast campgrounds or whatever. Right. So my parents went to the coast and yeah. hung out at the inner daughter crest in Oregon. Um, and you would just make friends, you know, like as you're like, Oh, I'll Dude, never see I, you again, but you make friends. Like, yeah, like that's like camp friends. Yeah. We're some of the coolest people ever, like best friends ever made. And then you never see him again. Yeah, absolutely. Like, whatever happened to that guy from Kelly? We were, too, we were super tight for like a whole week. <laughs> and then we were out. Yeah. Um, we were girls like your camp yeah, girl, your summer loves. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I'd like, it's, it's, cool I did because, go to prom with one though. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Dude. You're not, you're not supposed to follow up with anything. It's supposed to be here and gone. <laughs> it's she horrible was, to say. No, she was way cuter and cooler than any of the girls I went to high school with. So. That's really cool. No, yeah. I mean like, but I was thinking on, I'm like, dude, our kids are never going to experience that stuff. How many families do you know now that still go on summer vacations? A few. Not a lot just though, a few. right? Yeah, just a few. Okay. What about, um, going to summer camp? I know. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, I go to church, so I know a lot of people's kids that go to camp. But mm-hmm. um, I went to a lot of sports camps too. I know a ton of people who go to sports camps. Do you do you meet a summer love unless you're into your? <laughs> no, not uh, a sports camp. But okay, that's what I figured. <laughs> but I mean, maybe tennis camp. <laughs> this is it not not a wrestling camp. <laughs> so yeah, wrestling camp. Just let's try not to. Dude, it's like no. Here's how. All right, so here's a funny story about <laughs> wrestling. Right, wrestling. Whenever you like think that you meet a cute girl at a wrestling tournament, we always had this like. It's an alternate scale. Oh. It's like, is she like really a real world 10 or is she a wrestling 10? Because when you're wrestling, like a wrestling tournament, there's like 400 dudes around you and they're all like wearing singlets. So it's like office tens. Yeah. And then like, you see like one girl walk through and you're like, oh man, she's super cute. This is like high school, right? Mm-hmm. So like you had to be very careful because like, oh, she's super cute. And then you would see her any other time and you're like, this is super me being super vain. But like, I would see her another time and you're like, She's not that hot. <laughs> like, what's okay. I think? It's like, oh, the wrestling, like the, I got, I got so, by the wrestling factor. I was always a new guy at school, the new guy, not the nude guy, but the <laughs> new guy at school, right? <laughs> Maybe I was that guy every once in a while, but not very often. <laughs> Streaker. Yeah. <And> like, <laughs> so I was the new guy often. <laughs> and like, it's funny because when you stay to school long enough, the new girl comes in and you're like, oh, it's a new girl. Yeah. Check out the new girl, right? I know. Um, short story. One year I dressed up for Tootsie Day, quarterly and high. That's where you dress up as a girl. Oh, the opposite, right? Tootsie was in drag. Okay. Right. That so I dressed. Thing? Yeah. It was actually, it was spirit week thing or whatever. Right. Really? Which is kind of cool. Huh. So I, I get dressed <laughs> not up. Doing it anymore. Are they? I'm wearing a skirt and I doubt it. I'm wearing a skirt. <laughs> I've got my like hair done. It's all long and stuff and whatever. <laughs> and I'm walking through and my buddy Russ sees me, but he doesn't know it's me. Uh-oh. And I hear him go, who's a new girl. And I'm like, this new girl has some broad shoulders, man. I don't know what to. <laughs> I don't know what, what you're kind of girl are you into? Yeah, but it, but it's super funny because we all have that when you're in high school. It's it's that whole like oh, oh yeah, it is a new girl, and you're like oh, there's a new girls, check her out, you know? Yeah. Same as the office. I mean, same anywhere. Yeah. But but summer love, dude. I mean, like I was thinking about like um Greece. Okay. Yeah. That's where what's his face met what's her face. Um, oh, I forgot. I remember the yeah. names. Olivia Newton John met John Travolta. Camp, that's easier. Camp nowhere. Oh, nice. Dude, that's a throwback yeah, movie, right? Is. That's awesome. That's a great movie, too. Yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, heavyweights, but not with the kid. Well, the kid's in the dance scene. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that part. Yeah. Like at the end, they, by the end, they were all making out with each other. Um, but the camp nurse and then the head counselor. But, dude, I mean, that was summer love, yeah. right? Yeah. And, it's, it's, and I think it's because we get more. We come out of our, our vitamin D slump and go outside and we get hit. Boom. And we're full of it. And we're always out doing stuff. We're in nature. 
kind of brings our primal needs out. And then we start just, I don't know, you just well, start there's mingling. Less, there's less clothing being worn. It's, it's a great thing. I just, uh, you oh, know, I noticed that when I was in high school, <laughs> you know, it's girls a little bit more in the summer. It's just naturally you know, how it works. Just is what it is. But I mean, like, yeah. So like, I remember meeting this, it's not a girl, a dude, actually I met multiple girls, but a dude. And he had like a turbo graphic 16 yeah. at his campground. So we'd like show up and he's all like playing his video game. I'm like, yeah, dude, I want to play. I'm outside playing video games. We were in the woods playing video games, having fun. Like yeah. it was, it was actually cool. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it was it, a totally different time, which kind of brings me to summer and my new summer shoes. Yeah. So I got, they, I'm were taking pretty, them off. they were pretty sweet. Look at this. These are their footy shoes, right? So you're like, can you see that? They're like, pretty they're made legit. so your feet do this bling, and like your toes actually do what they're supposed to do. And they're super bendy. Um, huh. I'm kind of wearing them now because they're comfy. They're crazy comfy. They like, look like it'd be a nice like shoe nice to just kind of bump, bump around the house. In yeah. And if you're going to go to the store or whatever, like you don't have to put on. No, they're, dude, they are super comfy. Ryan, what are you rocking right now? I got, look at that. Look, look at the, that stretch. <laughs> look at that stretch. Got the new Keens on. He's going to clean himself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely Rob Schneider out of the animal. Dude, deceptively flexible. You know what's great about that movie? The second he <laughs> saw that stupid goat. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, no. And he does it. And you're like, ah, oh, freaking Rob Schneider. Thanks for doing that for us. You know, <laughs> I appreciate him, dude. Rob Schneider actually is underratedly funny. Absolutely. Same with Norm MacDonald was like one of those guys that now mm. I like, and, and rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Like that guy was freaking hilarious. You don't really appreciate what he throws at you. Yeah. Until you really start thinking and about really it. Really just quick one liners that mm-hmm. just kind of go over your head. They're yeah. just truly like, and they're not even necessarily, some of them aren't even dirty. They're just funny. Like, yep. like totally just observational type humor. And it's just like, whoosh, goes right over your head sometimes. And you're like, oh, wait, how did I miss that? Like, that was super funny. So Rob Schneider, love Deuce Bigelow, one and two. And the reasons why I like every different way. What's his face? The black dude I, that, that calls guy. him a prostitute yeah. or a mangina or whatever. Like, Every single time. Dude. That was actually, he's my, my favorite character in those movies. He's phenomenal. Yeah. And I, can't, um, I wish I could remember his name now. Yeah, I totally. I just, but, his name was TJ in the movie. Yeah. In the movies. Sorry, there's more than one. But I, I flip and love it. Like, I love watching New Girl. Or sorry, not New Girl, but uh, Hot the Hot Chick. Hot Chick. Where he turns into, <laughs> right? Another the girl. terrible movie. But, oh my like, God. but yeah, he's so but amazing still, yeah, in it, right? DJ Qualls is underrated also, I think, personally, uh-huh. because um, New Guy was a phenomenal movie. And I just love his cameo appearances in like in all the Adam Sandler movies that he's into. Yeah, totally. And he's also the butler Isn't in it? Home Alone 2. I love how great, how Adam does it with his friends. Oh, yeah. And they and do it with each other, along. too. Yeah. Like it's, all the other, because so like, cool. if you, what is it, uh, Dirty or Easy Money or is it Dirty Money? The one with Norm MacDonald and then um, Artie Lange that's in it. I don't know. I mean, Norm MacDonald's been in a million yeah. of them, though, because he's, like, he's, he's in a bunch of Adam Sandler stuff, too, but yeah. like. He was in, he was a main character in that movie, but then there's like all of these other guys that are like cameo characters and all the Adam Sandler mm-hmm. movies that are in that movie. And it's yeah. just like, it's super cool. And like some of those guys get their start by those roles. Like, I think that's really how Rob Schneider started getting more roles. You think so? Was because some of those secondary roles. Well, that makes sense. Norm MacDonald in uh, Billy Madison. Oh yeah. The friend that just like lounges. Totally the perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just, Billy, what do you think about that? Oh, that's not Billy. <laughs> it's like a statue. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's great. And some of these guys are on the not attractive spectrum. Yeah. Is that a nice way to put that? No, they're not attractive. Yeah. So they never make leading men. And then Adam pulls them on. Is like, no, these guys are awesome. You got to watch these guys, <laughs> like, right? Uh, what is and it? I know they all did stand up together, I think is what it was. The Ridiculous Six, though. Then he brings oh, in. That movie that. is so funny. Oh my gosh. Taylor dude. Lautner in that movie is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to watch it, but just because, you know, like when I, when I first yeah. saw it, I'm like, we'll just watch it. No, oh, dude, it's so and I'm good. Like, I'm like, Taylor Lautner's in it, and I see him, and I'm like, holy crap, he's my favorite now. <laughs> Taylor Lautner. He's my favorite. Some mental disability. Disability. Yeah. And his third nipple. <laughs> it's a pretty ridiculous movie. It, dude, it, is, it is pretty good. It's everything you want. It is everything you it want. It is. Yeah, there's action, there's a lot of comedy. Mm hmm. There's it's a Western. I mean, um, the genre fits. I mean, yeah, it's, it's everything you want from a movie called the ridiculous. I, they Six. need to do one now. That's like a take. Cause if it is a take on the magnificent seven, yep. that they should do one. That's like based off of platoon. Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's the one with freaking, um, not, what's that called? not tropic thunder. 
Basically, that's what that is. Okay, kind of. Yeah, kind of. So it's already been done. Kind of. Okay, maybe not Splatoon. Let's go Saving Private Ryan. Okay, I think that they should do a um, almost. Or do it based off of, let's go Iraq War. Adam Sandler style, Great White Ninja, Chris Farley-ish. Like, let's martial arty, I think. Would be kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, ninjas are, you could do a lot of ninja Beverly crap. Hills Ninja. Old school ninja stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, and that's. Yeah. Right? Chris Farley, Beverly Hills Ninja, yeah. right? He yeah. was a great white ninja. So, I mean, like, I think Adam <laughs> could take that genre and then make it just insanity. He's kind of done everything. I think that he's going to get there eventually. <laughs> hey, what we're just waiting for. That's all we're doing. I mean, the remake of uh, Longest Yard was solid, too. That actually was totally solid. I'll give him that. And I like the casting mm-hmm. in that movie. It was really great, too. Yeah, I agree. Nelly was actually not bad in that movie. We, uh, there, there's some good stuff out there, dude. I'm going to, yeah, I'll agree. And then, uh, what's his name? The, the big dude. It's like Cheeseburger Eddie. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. He's like now the host of uh, um, that one singing show on NBC. Anyways, but yeah, I don't know. So he's, we've talked about him on the show before too. The giant black dude used to be the, uh, oh, the old the, spice the, guy. Yeah, uh, freaking. <laughs> I have his book, Terry like, Crews. Terry Crews. Yeah. There we go. I have his book. Like, what <laughs> am I like, 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 Oh yeah, Terry Crews. What the heck? <laughs> Somebody's listening, like waiting for me to say it, and they're probably, like mad. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so do you want to jump in on this let's topic? um let's do it i mean we talked about summer love right let's do it let's jump in yeah let's push it real good let's push talk it. about sex baby well let's talk about you so baby. i know we've yeah. talked about sex before yeah um but this is this is a different scale because you know we talked about boundaries in the last episode mm-hmm. and this falls along with boundaries absolutely and this is I'm not going to say sex with children because that's gross. No, it's um, sex and children. When is it appropriate to teach your child about sex? And everything kind of within, everything with it, within yeah. an umbrella, because that's not just sex. I mean, there's modesty. You could throw in oh, there yeah. touching everything else. Like, so like, I yeah. was, I was thinking about, I mean, like this is the, the hard topic that most parents and fathers and movies portray as like the worst thing ever. Well, hey, Dad, how do, how are babies made? Ask your mother. You know? Yeah, and then your mom's like, oh, well, I'll you tell know, you when you're older. It's it, to me. To me, this subject isn't super hard, and I think it's because my mom was literally talking to us about it, like right when we started. I mean, probably before we should have even known. Hmm. But it made it an easy subject matter because it was always a conversation. It was, hey, you know, if someone touches you here, it's okay to say stop, or it's okay to to put boundaries on something. Yeah. So you're not in the situation. They should not be touching you here. Of course, if you're getting a bath, because that time you're not washing yourself, right? So if mommy's having to wash whatever or daddy's having to wash whatever, like yeah. that's that's not a sexual yeah. thing. It's in, unless of course, I mean it could be if you're gross, but but it's it's not done that way. So yeah. you know, like that way when me and my brother and sister were were growing up, we didn't really we didn't really have the conversation. It was always this this thing. We always knew. Yeah. Is that kind of, it's weird. Well, it was kind of like, I had that conversation early on with, with Owen. It was like, and then he goes to have his checkup. I think it was when he was four and the doctor's like, Hey, I need you to take your pants off. And Owen's like, no, I can't. And he's like, no, I need you. And he's like, well, and I'm, and he's like, no, you're a stranger. And he awesome. looks at me, he's like, good job, dad. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> he listened to me. And he's like, I'm like, Owen, I'm here. It's okay. Because he's a doctor. He's just trying to make sure that you're okay and healthy. So if you don't feel comfortable, you can go ahead and turn your head away or not look, but he does, you do need to at least pull him down so he can check you and make sure that you're okay. And he Dude, did. That's, that's like, cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like kind of getting that reassurance that he had listened. Like he knows that like there's modesty, like, yeah. It feels good when you know your kids are listening like that. Um, I was the, I didn't care who saw mine. I was like, whatever. Look at yeah. my Tang Tang. I was like Joe Coy's kid, you know? <laughs> Don't make it angry, <laughs> but, but I mean, like seriously, yeah, yeah. So you just you knew what was appropriate, what was inappropriate, and that that's kind of how my life was. It was just it was that way. So with my kids, my boys, we it's always been a conversation. It's never been not a conversation. Yeah. Which is so to me, it makes it simple. You know, you don't really go, okay, well, you put it in the, you know, like yeah, I've, that, there's a difference. It's I haven't easy had to that. figure that. I haven't out. had like that conversation necessarily yet. Like we're kind of getting down the. The, but like with it, just basically touching and stuff like that, like, yeah, there's, there's boundaries. Like you need your body's yours. It's not for somebody else to be touching, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially as a kid. And, you know, it's like, as you get older, like things change, you'll notice things. Yep. And, uh, 
you know, but it's like for right now, like you need to make sure that your body's yours and you need to be comfortable in your body. And, and for me with that, I just made a lot of situation, made a joke. You're going to get hair where there was no hair. Yeah. Your voice is going to change your, your breath. You're probably gonna start smelling funny. Like, yeah. you know, and I mean, you, you make the conversation easy by making it funny because funny is relatable. There's little kid getting hit in the nuts. And then there is pubescent getting hit in the nuts. Those are two totally different getting hit in the nuts. And then there's grown man <laughs> with nuts down to his knees getting hit in the nuts. There's yeah. Then there's it feels like there's the older dad. The farther they sag. <laughs> full <laughs> speed four year old running across the room head first. Hey, so uh, one time, yeah. <laughs> one time, hey, Amy, dad. <laughs> Amy was picking Dylan up from uh, from my house to bring him to hers, right? Um, her and Christian, and Dylan walked up and went, ah, cracked me in the dad. Nuts. What's the capital? Thailand, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so like. Hits me in the nuts. It's my, Bangkok, by the way. It is Bangkok. And my reaction immediately was like, Psh. I smacked him, just put him on the ground. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to. But there's an immediate reaction that happens. You're but like, how many guys, it. like, in our generation in high school played that? Like, Everybody smacks each other in the nuts. What's Capital Thailand? Bangkok. Or like, you had, like, the, the nut tap or whatever. That's the weird like, part. Like, like, I mean, it was just like, there's so many things. It's like, now, like, you would get charged with, like, sexual harassment. Yeah. Like, that's a felony. Thanks. You'd have to be registered for like. like Dude, so in, in yeah. Japan, they play this Cup game check. where they try and stick their finger up their butts or whatever. That's really weird. And I think like from the distant clothes or whatever. Right. Yeah. But it's, it, I don't remember there's a name for it, but I mean, like, I don't imagine girls running around punching each other in the tit. <laughs> eh, Sally. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Boob check. Yeah. Like. <laughs> what a horrible game. <laughs> oh it's my like, gosh. Maybe, I mean, like. And there's also a time and place and like, to I hit think, each other I think that's part of like the, well, the adolescent that's, that's what growing part. Up is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Figuring that stuff out that it hurts. And that's why it's funny. <laughs> like, it's horrible. But then you get to like, you're not going to be at work and you're like your mid thirties and be like, Hey, Craig, come here. Yep. What? What's the capital of Thailand? Bangkok. <laughs> He's like, next day you're fired. You're in HR's <laughs> office. No, you were my buddies. Come on. It's like, so uh, what's this I hear about you talking about uh, touching the phallic organ of another coworker? You can't give another dude a good game at work. <laughs> Good game. Way to make the sale, bro. Or like okay. checking oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know what my dipstick is? Oh, dude. Wrestling scarred me for life. And I like hazing. Dude, when sports, there's sports, hazing and then there's like, yeah, assault. <laughs> like, military hazing is a fun thing also. Like there's just, it's, there's, there's a lot of crazy other, but we need to teach our kids that, okay, let's break this down. As kids age, we teach them to respect your elders. Yeah. And to obey. I'm glad some of that stuff has died, right. by the way. Like, uh, yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, so I still think elders should be respected. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Um, obedience without thought should not be a concept in any way, shape, or form. Oh, it's Obedience within boundaries. Yeah, respect is given as long as the respect and the boundaries of Exactly, you. yeah. Like, so yeah. we want to teach our kids, yes, absolutely, respect your elders. Don't do as they say all the time. Yeah. Do not. And then take bits and pieces. I mean, it's, it's much like kind of us talking. Did you, everybody's going to take a little bit here, a little bit there. They're going to let go of everything else, right? Especially it when is. it's, when they, you need to hear, let your kids know when somebody tells you, don't tell your mom or dad. If you ever hear that and they're going to tell you something like, Hey, I got something I need to tell you, but like we can go do, but you shouldn't tell, you don't need it's our little secret. Don't tell your mom and dad or anybody else. Yep. It's just art between us. You're not going to do that. Don't and do like it. 10 years and younger. That's bad. Yeah. Unless it's like ice cream. Still. But, but you've already one the, thing, I mean, but like, you should have the conversation about inappropriate touching way before that point. Right. Yeah. 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 So kids are going to go, well, what is it? Well, I'll show you mine. If I show you yours, yeah. like, yeah, no, like you show me. Well, that, that happens that, with kids though. Yeah. That if it's an adult to a kid. I mean, adult I think to kid, no. every kid's going to go through that. And I hate yeah. saying it, but it's absolutely true. Like I know my kids did like, <laughs> I've, got, story, I've did. got stories from friends that have like caught their kids. Like being curious, they were like, like six and eight, and they're like, "What's it look like?" And they hear them laughing, and then they find mm -hmm. out, and then they're mortified. And they find out that like one of the kids saw the other kid naked. You're like, "How come there's a?" Giant... I'm raising little heathens. I'm like, "Dude, how come there's used bubble gum underneath your penis?" <laughs> it's a big ball of bubble gum. What the hell is that? <laughs> but like, I mean, they're thinking that they're raising heathens, and I'm like, I mean. You're raising normal people. It, it's, it's occurred. Like you're not, you're not out of the ordinary. Yeah. 
Um, I wouldn't encourage that behavior, obviously. <laughs> like, well, I don't think anybody does, but people get they the kids genuinely just get curious and want to know what it what it is and what it looks like, and not necessarily like they're going through the action, right? Like, but it's the visual. Okay, like, so I don't know what what's a boob look like. I mean, as a kid growing up, I always thought Bush was the the thing. <laughs> was the 80s dude national geographic here you go. basically is how it was and it was like so my friend nick and i when we were like we were young kids right and so we, we would chat about it and we're like oh yeah you know bush right that's awesome that's mm-hmm. not that was the part that didn't matter <laughs> you know like and you didn't realize it until you got older and you're like oh my gosh there's something else then that's amazing and that's how kids should be like yeah, they don't but, need to know yeah and unless it's about their own sexual organs and i think right? that like yeah and then it gets to the part where you know oh that's awesome but it's got to be in the right context. And you have to, I think you have to provide context with all of that. So we're like staying on the, like the respect. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. We can <laughs> no, somewhere we're else good. there. But like, cause we're children. Yeah. We can get so distracted kids, easy, but yeah. When kids you, when need you to teach know your kids, the they privates should, are theirs. Like, they should know the name also. Yeah. I, added, I mean, my son anatomically is correct. It's his penis. Yep. And he's yelled it in Costco before. <laughs> ah, he's like uh, mistakenly sitting there in the cart was playing around with something like, and hit himself in the, in the penis it's freaking hilarious and screamed bloody murder and said dad i hit my penis and this old guy was standing next to me and goes it only gets worse as you get older kid it's totally true too <laughs> all the time all the time it was, but, could have been more perfect and the, but the reason why is like so you don't want so many little oh call it a cookie or call it a whatever yeah, your noodle you don't want that you need something your ding-dong, your, that identifies yeah. it directly so if something does happen, they can say to the police or to whoever, they touched my penis. They yeah. touched my whatever, right? Instead of going, well, cookie. Well, what's your cookie? Point to it. No. Have them, have them describe yeah. it for real. It's okay. Your kids, I, if, if you're worried about your kid running around to yelling penis, it's better than out there swearing, right? Yeah. It's, embarrassing it's not way, a swear word too yeah, that's I mean, the funny part it's, yeah, it's like, real, right? it's like, don't be appalled when somebody calls it what it actually is. Like, yeah. And then kids yeah. also need to know that, hey, I don't have to kiss or hug everybody, including relatives, your grandma, your your whatever. Um, my daughter is not the biggest fan of old, wrinkled, dusty people. You know, and that's, so, I'm okay with like, but it, it, I want him to initiate the hugs. Yeah, like, but they, they shouldn't feel like they have to do it. That's the thing. If If you've got creepy uncle whatever, coming up to hug hey, your come, daughter come sit on my lap right you know like and she should go no i don't want to hug you this yeah. is no i don't that's know you that happen. well like that's one thing and that's, you know, that's if it's like my part. like my aunt and stuff and like i mike i know my kid well enough if he loves you he's gonna hug you like yeah newsflash like if he likes you he's gonna give you a hug at the end of the day and, and that makes sense and that's okay he, he but he also like has a radar he wants to know if you're safe or not mm-hmm. and so generally i mean the people i hang around with are safe so he gives them hugs i mean yep. like my men's group he hugs all of them. It's kind of funny and it's awesome. Like I'm co- it's totally cool with it. Okay. Like some of them are like weird, hey, buddy. Like, and he's just like, bye. <laughs> like, but I mean, but yeah, he's, he's learned how to make that decision. Right. Yeah. And that's the big one is that yeah. some kids feel they have to like the parent goes, no, you go have to go hug him, go hug him yeah. or go give him a kiss. Goodbye. And he's like, uh, no, no I, that's not okay. Certain relatives like that are close to me. Um, you know, he'll do it anyways. If you see me hug, then he'll hug them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I can think of a few you. people that I've really told him, like forced him to go hug. Um, there was like my great, my, my grandma, his great grandma, who was dying of cancer. I did tell him to go give her a hug. Well, um, that's a different story. And it was more for her than him. Than yeah. him. And, you know, she sat there and tussled his hair and stuff. But that's another thing too, like with kids that I deal with. So and, yeah. clearly there's, it's situational, right? Yeah. I mean, that that's how it has to be. Um, Strangers touching your kids, man. I'm, yeah. You, I've got a kid with curly hair, right? It's super cute. I get it. I know. I know what I'm his dad. I know it's cute and curly. It doesn't give you onus, and it's always the old people at Costco or the grocery store. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at your adorable curly hair! And they start touching my kid's head, and I can. And lately, you know, the last couple of years, I've kind of snapped back a little bit. I'm like, that's my kid. You're not allowed to touch him. Yeah. I'm like, no. Dude. I, you should teach him to say stranger danger every time a stranger comes up. And like some lady like reached over at Costco. This was like not even like a month ago. And he goes, Weird. and like he kind of like let out a whale. And I was like, he doesn't want to be touched. You don't get to touch him. Yeah. And I was like, 
Besides, you're a stranger. He doesn't know you. You shouldn't be touching kids you don't know. Yeah, that's totally you're breaking. Wrong. I was, and I was, I was like, I know it's a generational thing, and it's probably you, you're harmless, and I'm sure that you're really sweet. But like, as a parent nowadays, we have a lot to worry about. But it doesn't but, matter. It's it's not yeah. their blood of any kind. No, like he doesn't owe you the ability to let him tussle. So she kind of got offended, and I'm like, just because you're 900 years old doesn't mean you can touch me. Yeah, just because you're old and you think he's cute doesn't give you onus that like. Oh, I'm going to touch that kid. Think about it. Would this, would this person touch a 40 year old's hair? No, here's the deal. This is, I was like, are you going to go? And I was like, you know, it's like me going and touching your food at the restaurant. Cause it looks good. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go up and like stick my finger in spaghetti and go, Oh yeah, that's delicious. Have a nice day. Are you going to want to eat that? You feel a little bit of violation there. Like think about it being your own body. Like, I, yeah, it's weird that people just would want it. That, it it me bug, that one bugs me. Dude, that it really bugs me. That actually thinking about it bugs me a whole lot. Like a lot. So And I love old people. Like I really do like being around the I elderly. like some old people. I'll be honest. There's some that bug me. <laughs> <laughs> we have but no, to. for the most part, I respect I like I that older generation, I do there is some sort of part of me that like I do have like Well you you have to care I mean, for, but yeah, like we were trying to respect him what we do. There's but like, boundaries exist for a reason. Don't be creepy old person that touches little kids just because you think they're cute. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. That's not okay. It's super weird. It is. It's just not okay. That was a tangent, but it's part of this. Like <clears throat> no, but it's true, you though. teach him. And my son has now picked up that he knows he doesn't have to be touched by everybody. Well, I'm glad you're, you're teaching him because boys, honestly, man. So with the amount of men being abused and not reporting, how many boys do you think get molested? And don't report because they're afraid or because they're they're ashamed. So from age zero to twelve, boys non-reporting, they, I believe the statistic is actually higher percentage than girls. That's amazing. But girl, mm -hmm. once you get above twelve, then it's twelve to twenty something. Women don't report more than men at, hmm. to a certain point. Interesting. Um, but and it happens almost at an equal rate too. It's pretty close within yeah. it's well, I mean, like ten percent. But nobody would minutes. even assume that. All right. Uh -huh. Most people don't go, oh no, it doesn't happen. But like it's girls get molested more. Yeah. It's like, no. Nah, nah. It's it's a conversation that has to happen with kids because with gosh. With with the boundaries being laid out, with kids understanding what's right and what's wrong, then you get into your you know, like high school years where maybe you've got a friend that wants to whatever, man. I was in the army, right? Check us out. I'm in the army and I'm back in the supply office with the supply clerk guy that that was not my job but i was at a bad knee i was injured at the time so they were like hey i do supply i'm like all right cool whatever so i'm not gonna mention his name but he was a big ugly looking mofo um probably with the same age and he was like but you won't get naked back here and i'm like oh whatever I'm gonna i'll totally get naked it's the military don't <laughs> don't ask they're stupid that happens right so i'm like whatever i don't give a crap right the time he starts touching himself is the time i was like i'm out Ooh. And I'm like, I didn't realize he was that, grooming you. That that was his, Ooh. that was his thing, Ooh. right? And I'm like, all right, mother. You're like, instead of beating your ass, I'm just gonna walk away, because that's not uh. all right. But it's true. I mean, it happens, right? And even in high school, other boys know to other boys because they think it's appropriate now or something. And, and you're like, no, your kids need to know what's good and what's bad. Yeah, and regardless I, of gender too. I think that's the other part because now you're getting the identity stuff that's coming into play too. Yep. And that's opening the door for other stuff. And Dude, that I've seen it happen here locally. With like, all this weird identity stuff, how do you let friends spend the night? How do you, I mean, <laughs> think about it. Hey, look, I, I don't want your girlfriend spending the night, well, but duh, your, your buddy duh. can, he's by. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, you, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe your girlfriend's just been, I, I, I don't no, know. Like, you know, like, no, you don't like really, what are you doing? I ever no, And but, that's, but you see what I'm saying? So yeah. what, if, what if you've got a daughter who, who likes girls, do you let her friend spend the night? Gosh, that's tough. This is the world we're in. You because yeah. You, you and that's, don't, that's what makes parenting ridiculous nowadays is like, I, that was stuff we didn't, my parents generation never I had mean, to worry I, about. Like, I think there was they had to worry about like people sneaking out. Dude, no, I think there was potential back then. It was just wasn't discussed, right? Sure. And parents were more naive to it to go, well, whatever, Sally and, and Jody. 
Yeah. Where am I getting these names from? Why did I, what is wrong with me? I'm like watching like gold girls. I don't know what is going like on. That. Yeah, like crazy. Rose and Blanche. But it, yeah. it makes this <laughs> parenting now like super tough because you don't know. Yeah. And and you don't. And that's you where just have to trust your kid. That's where you instill boundaries with your kids. Mm-hmm. Like that's where the reinforcement of like beha- like they know right and wrong and you've got to trust them to a certain extent. Yeah. And and that's that's super hard too. Well, letting go is the process of trusting. Yeah. That was like this morning. Um I let Owen was like insistent. He's like, Dad, I want you to drop me off in the in the car circle. Ooh. Instead of walking me to the door. <laughs> and I'm like, You do? I like, yeah, I really I really want Owen's you to growing. I, I know. He's he's six now, so now all of a sudden he thinks totally he's totally sad, he's, isn't he? He's it? sixteen. Um <laughs> I'm I'm big now, Dad. I can handle this. We can do this. Yeah. And so he's like, I, I want to be dropped off in the in the car circle. I'm like, okay. And then like me, like I, I say goodbye, I give him a him. hug, because I watched him like slow, oh, yeah. drive as slow as I can, like looking to see if he goes towards the front door and like, you know, kind of roll my window down and look back as I'm waiting to turn. Instead, I'm like watching him walk through the front door. Awesome. And he's like, when it like totally fine and and you know. But that that's one of the <laughs> levels of letting go and yeah, opening that it was trust. kind of hard it was like it was the moment i'm like this is hard yeah <laughs> Dude, that's amazing you know i'm used to like my little boy dropping him off at like walking him to the door and kissing him on the top of the head and t- you know hope he has a good day and mm-hmm. you know that's totally amazing tell him i love him but like and this morning i told him i love him in the car obviously but like it's like bye dad like shuts the door that's and cool. he's just gone I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> my, my big man just walked out the door. Yeah, that's right. My big man. Yeah, it's so, only been a, been six for a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the boundaries have to be there because when we we look at, <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't matter where it is. It could be church. You're not not everyone's bad. No. Clearly, no, it's a small percentage. But, but we have to have the conversation. You look at the Catholic Church. What happened? Yeah, I mean, we all mentioned that, right? Boy Scouts. You Boy Scouts. Um, you look at the amount of pastors every single year. Pastors, right, of heads of church, every year being convicted of molesting parishioners. There was that one pastor was like, "Oh, I was getting the demons out through their vaginas." Right, he had to have sex with the. And I'm like, That's "Wait, so messed up." Who in their right mind was like, "It's yeah. okay, take me." I know I'm. My, well, even not just what? that, but like then they're doing predatory stuff on you know, spouses of people like adults. Yeah. I mean, the predatory behaviors exist no matter where you're at and you have to be regardless of age. So that's why boundaries are so important to instill at an early age because boundaries that are instilled in childhood are like a hundred times more likely to stand by the time they reach adulthood. 100%. And that's why you got to start early too. So when we talk about when's the right time right now, yeah, right now is the right time. Something that you can talk to your kid about now, regardless of age. There's something that you can instill in them to secure their safety, uh, especially when it comes to like sex or sexuality or, you know, that type of stuff. Like your kid is, if your kid's six, they don't need to know about non-binary, whatever. So here's, they don't need to know like that there's X, Y, Z, they don't care, whatever. They don't care. They just yeah. like want to know if you want to go play GI Joes later or not. And it's really I'm, weird. I'm like, if, you, if you watch <laughs> children as they grow, and all kids do this, no matter what. Um, there's a there's a period where they're they figure out they've got a pleasure organ, right? Yep. And the, they they the hump stone. the floor or the whatever. Stone. <clears throat> right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> awesome. It's like worry you're like a little wishing <laughs> mm-hmm. stone or lucky rabbit's but, foot. But you'll see them hump the floor, hump <laughs> random things, right? And then they get over it, and it's it's gone for a long yeah. time, and they come back to it like they they grab themselves <clears throat> a lot. They're and a you're lot. Like, a lot. If you have little boys, they grab themselves a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're figuring it out too. Things are going on, but it's funny. Yeah. And they, they go and they, you don't, I mean, you, you call them out a little bit on it, but you don't have to yeah. a lot because it's you don't like shame them. It's like maybe like, a year that, yeah. that lasts and that's it's it. Like, hey, and it's gone. <clears throat> inappropriate here. Like if you're out in the main room, yeah. there's people around. That's not appropriate. Not in front of people. Not in front of people. You can go to your bathroom. Go excuse yourself. Go to the bathroom. Like adjust don't spend yourself. hours in there. Yeah. Go adjust yourself. Go to your room, adjust yourself, come back in, whatever. Just leave the room. Mm-hmm. Not everybody needs to see. Cause guess what? Adults, adult males have to adjust themselves too. We just get really sneaky about it. But like, you know, the whole stretch, the whole bottom of your pockets. A lot of people suck at it too. Yeah. Really awful at it. And some people are just like straight up. And so obvious, what's, but... what's kind of interesting was like, <laughs> it's not okay. When you teach your kids that touching yourself in front of somebody and in, in front of public is, is bad. You almost do, 
you don't shame them, but it's embarrassing, right? Anytime yeah. you get called out for anything, it's embarrassing for the most part. Hey, you get caught picking your nose, embarrassing. Would you rather your parent tells it to you or some other chick as she pulls sees yeah. like a giant massive booger come out? How did, when did, what, when did you figure out that farting was embarrassing? Um, when the girl that you liked in school thought that you were gross. I don't think I ever, I've never farted in front of girls except my sister. Really? Yeah. I, I don't want to kill anybody <clears throat> except okay. my sister, apparently when I was younger. Um, but <laughs> like, it's gross, man. Like, I, yeah. and that's, I don't, I don't like to do it. It, I'm not, I'm not okay with it in front of people. Like even my friends as a dude, so I'm not going to fart in front of you. Yeah. I, I'm just not that guy. I just get turned off by people who just think it's hilarious to like sit there and just freaking rip one. I get yeah, no, that's gross. Especially if you're like at friends that are married and they're around their spouse and it's just like, hey, babe, can you go grab me something on the fridge? <laughs> and it's like rip a massive fart. It's like, I don't ever what? want to be that comfortable with somebody because I mean, like, my comfort level doesn't mean making them disgusted by yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want them to like be grossed out by me. Like, yeah. So don't associate this smell with who I am. Yeah. So when you walk by like a turd factory, you're like, oh, my husband, what the, uh, you know, like, Gross. Well, that's not going to make do? you like, well, that's not going to yeah. make you want to have sex with me. <laughs> I don't want you to associate me with nasty. Well, it's like funny too. Like, and then I hear like the stories of buddies. It's like, Oh yeah. I Dutch oven to my wife in the bed. And it's like, what? It's like, yeah, I farted in it and I held her head under the covers and I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, Oh yeah. I bet she was super thrilled with that. Yeah. Like, I mean, kind of, there, there is some humor, but like, it's nothing that I would ever do to it's somebody. It's funny. gross. Because it's happened to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I if you your that. wife Dutch oven to you, <laughs> how, cause girls are nasty too. You, y'all are nasty. You know it. <laughs> girls but, fart too. <laughs> like let's, let's be real. Right. It. And, and girls do it in front of other girls. Yeah. Right. That's. So she have that one friend. That's a girl that like just belches. I think it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, do you ever have one? I, I guess that? if you have competitions. I had a friend that was know, a girl man. like in college and she was just like, like Barney Gumble belch, like wow. Simpsons. Yeah. But that's, I think that that's part of refining children also is yeah. teaching proper manners, you know, whatever. Shocker. She was always single. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, like <laughs> these are, these are things you teach them. So yeah. when, I, when I talk to my kids, I'm like, look, you know, it's like when you're, I'm going to call you out on things, not because I want to be mean, but because I, I don't want you being called out in front of other people. So I never thought about cleaning my ears when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. Until one time a girl wanted to give me butterfly kisses. Oh. That's where they did a little, right. And she was going to go up to my, my face and she was like, Oh, your ears are gross. And I'm like, wait, what, what do you mean? My ear, what do you mean? My ears are gross. Like, Oh, that's, you didn't know the like, Q-tips were a thing. And well, I never, I never thought about it. Cause I was huh. a kid. Yeah. I'm a kid. I mean, you know, I'm not showering often anyway. Right. Cause I'm a kid. Okay. Who cares? Yeah. But I was like, ever since that day, guess who cleaned his ears out? That's guess what, who, that's guess what I was cares? getting. That was what I was getting about with the fart thing, right? Yeah. Once I figure out that like somebody might think that that's gross. Yeah. Would it have better if my parents had called me out? Absolutely. Or my yeah. brother or sister? Absolutely. Would have been cheese, but, but it's just another else. thing that they want me to do, and I don't want them to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally a real thing. <laughs> Crazy. Thirteen-year-old boy, right there. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's true. Don't tell me what to do. But I was I was super young, so I mean, like, it's we have to. It might be embarrassing for us to call our kids out on whatever, but it's better than their boyfriend, girlfriend, or somebody else yeah. doing it. So, you know, like, as a parent, like, Justin Silva. somebody's calling you. <laughs> Can we, uh... I love how that was actually part of this. <laughs> I didn't realize we were connected, and can we just ignore my ringtone for a minute? Um... At least it was like, my... <laughs> No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different one. This dude, this is really weird. I, I know. You've played it on here, I think. Flipping, yeah, I, I love it. I don't know why I like it so much. Was, um, but, that was my buddy Dustin, by the way. But no, as uh, as far as like resources, to, to where to start with your kids. And if you don't go there's to church, books everywhere. there's books everywhere. One that I use with Owen is awesome. And there's one called God Being All of Me, and it's awesome. And it's not like over in your face. It's teaching the kid to respect your body and respect like – relationships around you on like who's safe who isn't safe like hey if i'm if i you know it's okay that mommy and daddy might see me without my clothes on mm -hmm. but i'm not going to go to school and have a teacher help me take a bath like i'm not going to you know it's yeah well so, that'd be awkward yeah but like it's teaching the kid to understand <laughs> like 
who is okay to see what or who's okay to be a part of what or have help with what and who's not. Like, I went to uh, this elementary school in a small town. <clears throat> um, and we, during PE, it was physical. We played yeah. flag football. We played all sorts of stuff. There was a requirement that you had to shower after school or after class. <clears throat> and it was single pedestal, five heads coming off of it, just a bunch of naked dudes. Yeah, and, and that was the thing getting over that in high school. That's tough to get yeah, over, dude. It was. Because you're like, and then once you, you got to keep your eye level. Yeah. <clears throat> once you wrestled, like, it was just like you didn't care. Like, you you felt so gross after practice. I'm like, I don't care who sees me. I'm getting freaking clean. And I'm going to scrub till my first layer of skin falls off. Like, and never drop soap. I don't care who you are. <laughs> just, that's like, You always made fun of the person that did, oh, everybody would, like, scream and yelp and, like, cat call or whatever. Nothing ever happened, but like, gosh, guys are dicks, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> do you have a favorite shower head? Do girls ever do that? Oh, dude, my my shower head right now. I know, but like I, in high school, like was there a certain shower that like stall that you had? Nope. If you ever, okay. I think I think if I spend more because the busted ones, the ones that were busted off, were always my favorites. It was weird. I never smelled in high school. I uh, could. I, I could, showered in high school like three times a day. I, I never smelled like it was really weird, and I, probably because of how I ate, but like. Never like I would play first period, no zero hours concert choir was was select choir, sorry. Yeah. Then I had weightlifting, then I had PE, <laughs> then I had concert choir. <laughs> I dude, I my schedule's bomb. It was really it was really great. But like Pretty and then I, after schedule. school, it was I had some I had some Home great ec. classes. <laughs> it was really cool. Advanced actually. cooking. Like <laughs> like I did some really cool stuff because I got all the stuff out of the way. Woods. <laughs> but then I would go and I would like I would play uh badminton with my dad okay. after school. We'd go down to what used to be Stay Fit, mm -hmm. which is now 360. Peak. Oh, it's 360. It was okay. like Snap, Stay Fit. It's all sorry. It, yeah, yeah. it just changed a million times. But they had racquetball courts back in the day, and we'd play, and I would get disgusting and dripping sweat every, but I wouldn't, I'd never smell, which is really weird. And mm -hmm. then I would use the bathroom and clear the house out. I was a nasty little dude when I took a dump. I think anybody that takes pre-workout. Does that too, I but. never had a pre-workout. We're time, getting though. off topic, though. No, it's okay. But I mean, like you know, I, I never, <laughs> I never smelled. So like, yeah, it was just, it was awkward because I, it was weird to think that you had to shower. Yeah. And then it was just me and a bunch of, it was a primarily Indian-based school, so it was a lot of Indian okay. kids there, and me and a bunch of Indian kids, um, and I'm like the only white pecker there. <laughs> For the most, I mean, literally, it was just a, a lot of, a lot of tan colored mofos and then my whiteness exposed to the world you stuck out literally <laughs> yeah i'm glad i had massive bush back then that was saving grace no like it was always funny because you could always pick out who was taking steroids um that's easy enough yeah <laughs> but no but, that, that's another sorry, conversation keep, for that time yeah, no but no like, i mean and like the broaching the back end of this conversation too like society parents church school a lot of folks have a hard time approaching talking about sex and for the most part like my at least from my views, it's suck at it. They suck yeah, at well, it. Well, yeah, most places suck at it. Yeah. It, even society on TV, it's, oh, yeah. it's really hard. You know, let, let's let's make it. No, it's not. It reinforces, so, yeah. it reinforces like bad habits as a parent. Like you should be able to have vulnerable conversations with your kids. Mm -hmm. And then, then, like I said, like we talked about boundaries last week, but like this is part of it. Like you're instilling things and in, like values for your kid that like are going to carry forward for the rest of their life. This is a, a life cha it's a life changing conversation. And think about it this way is that parents that are willing to have a vulnerable conversation about sex with their kids, this could be a life saving conversation. 100%. Because if you don't have the kids that are more that are more likely to be promiscuous, that are have risky behaviors when it comes to sex, that are like more prone to having multiple partners that are more prone to having more teen pregnancies are due to the fact that the parents would not have the real honest conversations about the subject. Well, They're I mean, less and curious. Then, then you've got kids that never had the conversation and they do it and they feel ashamed yep. and they, they want to become suicidal because of, Oh, it was, that yeah, was or it. They let, I'm going to let porn teach me what, what sex is all about. Good. And I mean, it's here's a playboy. So this is, it'll teach you all you need to know back in our day. Right. But, <laughs> Right now, it, it's so easy and so yeah. accessible that you don't even have to try. Yeah. You know, like, it's crazy. And, and sex is way more than just what happens physically of the body or touching or kissing or whatever. Like, there's the literal chem chemical responses that are at play. Well, I mean, they talk and, about how every partner you have, you give a piece of yourself because yep. it's a transfer of energy, not to get too hippie, but 
they talk about the energy transfer that happens and legitimately does. And then, ooh, also the encoding from sperm to the women, little bits of DNA literally changing you with every yeah. partner. And, and that's science. That and then uh, the release of oxytocin. So why are women so connected to their children? Because of oxytocin, right? Massive release after childbirth. Why are women connected to their partner sexually or after sex? Because there is a release of oxytocin. Well, slight I, release. And actually sperm induces oxytocin. There we go. Too, and I'll so, say that because yeah. not many women get to release. No. <laughs> Let's no. be honest. <laughs> but sperm does actually <laughs> cause the body to release that. It literally does happen. There's a chemical reaction that takes place within the So organs. something happens, which is good. Yeah. So... Um, mm. There's a connection there. I mean, it's and the, there's it's more than just a physical response. There's the emotional response. There's a spiritual connection there, and people can't really and that's undeniable. That's scientifically backed that mm -hmm. that takes place. Oh yeah, and that's that transfer of energy. I mean, yeah, whatever you want to call it, it, it's all there. Yeah, and so you know, like having that discussion with your kids about what it is and what it isn't, and you know, dude, let's. How does mom? You had the conversation from mom and dad. Yeah, I had the conversation from mom. Yeah, and then friends. And TV. So yeah. how did how I had mom and dad and friends and, and but, church and like, but yours was more so mom and dad because yeah. right. So I had a single mom, but that sure. was, you know, that that's all I had. Right. And then it was just wondering how did that go for you? I'm intrigued. Um, it was, there were two totally different <clears throat> conversations and my mom was kind of afraid to talk about the guy reaction parts. Like kind of, I think she like was embarrassed. Correction? Yeah. Uh, like, you, you know, can get a boner. Hey, like my mom didn't use that term, but like, no, like my dad talked about like what your body does. And then the, it was more hit around the consequences of it. Like, yeah. I mean, when you do it, like you can have a kid and you could have this or you can okay. do and like, so like there was the action part of it where mom was more about their emotional response for mm -hmm. like, you know, girls like to be told nice things and then their body reacts in certain ways when certain things happen, like if they're touched in certain ways or if they're, and so like, but she's like, but she also said, you have to be careful because a woman, her emotions draw connections, especially at a young age, like young ladies will get connected to you faster because that's just the chemical hormonal response of who they are. And so you have to be careful of how much you give to another woman, because every time you give a little bit, they're going to take more than what you're giving. And so they're going to grow. They're probably going to like you more than you like them. So your mom said they're going to read into it more. Yeah. Like most things we say to women. I'm playing, I'm playing, sort of, I'm playing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but no, and like, so like mom was more on the, the approach of like, you know, that's why we're careful about this. Because if you do, part, if you jump into this and she's like, I hope you do it in the right place in the right time. Like, be careful about it because you could connect with somebody that may not understand that, you know, if you don't want to be with that person, they're not going to understand why. Because now they have that physical connection. Yeah, that makes the sense. The emotional connection. And then uh, you have like, it's, it's more than just doing it and getting out. Ryan had a good talk. Yeah. Your, your mom did good. Good job, mom. Yeah. And, uh, so like, yeah, and that is sex is more just than just like a physical act. It's way yeah. more than just that. And it's not just about getting off and getting out of there. Like, you know, and, and people that treat it that way. And if they have that conversation with their kids, their kids are more likely to be reckless. So you have to have like the genuine, real in-depth conversation to help them understand that there's more issues at play than just doing it. There's a lot going on on the back end. I, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. That's what she said. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. Check this out. <laughs> <sighs> we're, it's funny that we're like perpetual 14 year olds having this conversation. We're trying to be serious at the same time. Every time we're talking about something, it's like, you said do it. <laughs> boner. <laughs> he said boner. <laughs> like, it's, no, like, <clears throat> yeah. It's it, and, but, but it makes it fun, right? The more fun you have during something, the more you retain, right? So, I mean, yeah. and then that's why you could teach it that way. That's why the conversation doesn't have to be. It's honest. Tough, I, like, yeah. I appreciated the honesty. Like it was things that I wouldn't have thought of in my adolescent hormone rage filled state of being a teenager. Dude, thinking, I All the chicks are hot. Like getting out besides <laughs> that saying like, Oh, you mean Obese. all the chicks aren't there just to be hot? Like they have feelings too, like caveman me. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have my first real girlfriend until I was like freshman in college, but like you waited. I did. Wow. Yeah. I think you would people attach earlier 
or when they're younger because we're more free to love somebody. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is kind of cool, you know, but I mean, like, so <clears throat> with my boys, dude, when we had the conversation, it was, these are STDs also. Do See, you want this have, on your penis? I didn't get that conversation because we got like the real, I don't know, my health class kind of took care of that one for me. I'm like, yeah, don't want that. Um, so my boys didn't have that class yet. They okay. were that young. Okay. So I was like, here's pictures. Do you want this on your business? Do you want it to burn and itch every time you go pee? Do you want to like feel ashamed that like you don't want to give that to other people? Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Gross. And you they were like, do you oh, want wow. to have it? Do you want to have a disfigured wang for the rest of your life? And then you're like, oh, I don't. Like, I'll keep it to myself. Keep it pretty. <laughs> keep it pretty. <laughs> you know, and I think that you know we t- we talk about a lot of those things, and and in school, like you know, like they were giving out condoms like crazy when I was in high school. Um, our health teacher like just had a bucket full of condoms in the room, and like I never used them, but it was like. You'd grab them as a joke to your buddies and you'd like throw them at each other. Like you wanted to get your Dude. buddy that was dating a girl in trouble. You would like leave one or somewhere. <laughs> you know, how people are always like, Oh, it's too small to fit me. I'm too big. I need the magnums. Mm, yeah. Yep. I took a normal one and pulled it over my head and over my nose to my lips and breathed into my mouth and out. And you could literally feel like the balloon <laughs> up. Or if you're driving down the road and you hang one out, open up with your fingers and hang it out the road and see how long it gets. There is nobody in the planet that can't fit a normal condom. I don't care if it's not comfortable for you, whatever. Quit being retarded. I mean, you know what I, I mean? Don't, I don't like that word, but yeah. I've done it better. It's, you know, I use it all the time because I'm, I'm that guy. I am. I know. But I mean, like seriously. So I used to use that word a lot until I had worked in special needs. And I mean, then, like I, yeah, I, I have special changed. needs friends yeah. and I'm like, I can't, I can't stop it. I don't mean yeah. it ill. It just is comes out it's like using the n-word it's like used to be used differently and i don't know like yeah, it's another conversation using, for another i time, never grew up yeah. using the n-word so uh, i know and i never did either but it's like i my think about didn't really either. i think about the r-word being because like oh. the n-word used to not be a negative yeah, connotation I, I use it as like a well the r-word it, retarded i use it as a mechanic style because when you retard something you slow yes, it down no that i understand and that's as as a guy that used to work in vehicles and did yeah. my own maintenance in the military like yeah yeah. Um, that's where it just rolls off. Yeah, I get Sometimes that. I'm a bit slow. That's a- <laughs> the hard part was when I was working with special needs kids and it's like, they, you know, they're given a term and then all of a sudden their diagnosis becomes the negative connotation for normal people's bad actions. Mm. And then it's like, oh, they take it personally. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like, I won't use that it. That makes anymore. sense. Yeah, I totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So it's more out of respect. It's like, I don't want to call somebody retarded because that would be calling somebody that might have you know mental incapabilities like yeah it's I mean, weird it's, to think that like the, the retarded because it just means slow and i had a special <clears> needs <throat> kid that literally told me you know you know what the word retarded is for and i'm like what he's like for people that can't come up with another adjective for the word retarded i like him i'm like <laughs> i'm flipping like him. That's awesome. i was like i dig that all right <clears throat> that's totally cool i dig it <laughs> But it, so people really, if you're having issues with that conversation with your kids, yeah, bring them to a farm, turn on the freaking discovery channel. What are you going to do? I mean, it's, it's not that hard to go. You and me. That's it. I know, dude. I tell every time I think about it, to watch next files with no lights on. Break it down now. But really, I mean, like, that, uh, Bloodhound Gang. Yeah, who was, yeah. Okay. But I mean, if it's, it's not hard to do, discovery channel, everything has it. And I mean, people are having sex constantly on TV. Now. Yeah, that was like oh, and the other week we were like flipping through the channels, got on like one of those nature channels, and there's two kangaroos going at it. And he's like, "What are they doing?" I'm like, "They're making baby kangaroos, Don't buddy." Kangaroos have two penises or whatever, something weird. Uh, turtles are weird like that, where they've got like both have a clo- one's got sure. a penis, one's got a cloaca, but it like extends out from the. You know yeah. the word? Yeah, I'm just a science major, dude. Wow, cloaca. Yeah, I know one of them. <laughs> Hey, baby, want to see my Scrabble score on that one? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> but it, it, it shouldn't be that hard. And if you make it fun and laughable, kids will retain it. It's, it's very, very simple, you know? I, well, animals is a great way to explain it. <clears throat> animals. Because, because if you use that, that like, arena for that conversation, you know, you're right over there with your microphone. Dude, I'm just not really enjoying where it's at. I don't know what's going on with me right now. <laughs> but like, no, that arena, like of, of animals, like you can describe a lot oh, about yeah, what totally. takes place. Yeah, that that animal 
is aroused and has an erection and he uses his erection to it, deposit sperm inside the female Do you and know what's funny? The, the female gets pregnant and the kids are like, and my son was like, Oh, whoa, that's crazy. And then he's like, started thinking, he's like, is that how babies are made? <clears throat> I'm like, why do you put it together? And I'm like, yeah, kids will do this. And he's smart. like, Oh, totally. So smart. he kind of, he's six and he kind of knows how babies are made now, but I'm not like, there's nothing wrong with that. Instructing right? him to like, so here, so when you, because Dustin called, and you're check gonna this get, out. Yeah. You're going to love this. And I, I love that Dustin called. Dustin's mom raises animal things. Mm-hmm. Hamsters. Okay. Peacocks. A goats, lot of turnover time on those, um, on the bunnies. reproductive cycles. They're like looking at six weeks per litter. Dude, crazy fast, yeah, right? Yeah. So one night. That's where the term we going hear, like rabbits. We hear yeah. the hamsters going insane. <laughs> like crazy insane, right? So Dustin, like, we're going to go look. So we go out there and there is a hamster mounting the other hamster, right? Yeah. But he's got one leg kicked up on this like little counter. So it's totally like porno style. Gross. It was, dude, it was the funniest. Dude. It was the funniest thing ever. Um, Dustin named this little hamster Riston after me. I don't know why I've never done that before, but <laughs> just seeing this hamster with his leg kicked up on a counter basically was the most hilarious thing ever and you wouldn't think that that you know you would think oh this is yeah it's the animal kingdom there's no way no this dude is freaky yeah. it was freaking no, awesome it's like i'm a, sorry it's like owen <laughs> at the farm i took him to a farm this summer and got to see all the animals and all of a sudden there's all these baby animals and he's like well how do these baby animals get here and then she's like see that pen over there and there's the two pigs there's the the sire and the mm-hmm. the sow in there and it's like they're uh they're making baby pigs right now like, dude if you grow up around <laughs> horses and you know how big that thing is and you're like taking a leak and you're like dang or like a horse goes in the heat a female horse yeah. and they're like flashing like oh, uh, ugh. it's gross but it's like yeah. could you imagine if, if god had made women like that <laughs> it'd be so awkward <laughs> thank you for not doing that by the way but the, you this know, like, discussion has such a tendency that it, it could go so off sorry. the rails. We so, are so sorry. It could go off the rails <clears throat> so quickly right now. Yeah. <laughs> but no, there's a there's also a side of this too that like the faith based culture. Yeah, right? the purity culture makes sex That's, dirty and evil. And you know, I've talked about it in previous episodes. It doesn't need to be. Like, no, it's, it doesn't need to be. And I have my own personal choices with why I choose to abstain. And mm-hmm. you know, like I've had sex at least once in my life because I've got a child, right? You only did it once. That was the first time. Yeah. One and only. <laughs> 100% success ratio. Um, You're a winner, dude. That's what matters. <laughs> Ace in this game. But no. But, like, but purity, yeah, culture, purity does culture does make it dirty. And, and it, it should be because it's, it's a beautiful its, thing. Or yeah, it and it ha- it's had its fingers in kind of the sex talk for so long. There's so much wrong here. I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm laying it up for oh, it. I, see. Oh, no, you're too <laughs> I was doing too. that on purpose. <laughs> but I'm, no. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking purity culture, making it dirty. Yeah. And you're bumping two of the ugliest parts together of your body. But no, and but sex is, is sex is, was designed by God. I mean, if you're gonna look at the purity culture side of it, God designed it and he designed it to be awesome. Yeah. But he designed it to be awesome in the right context. High five, you know, yeah. like and, sweet. And he wants you to have a lot of it. Like that's biblical. Like don't withhold from one another. Like, when you've been apart, you need to come back. Like, that's in the Bible. He's telling you, like, get it on. So, but like, he's also telling you, be smart about it. Here's a random faith based thought, right? God knows everything, beginning and end, all that, right? Okay, cool. And he was in the garden with Adam and Eve, too. Yeah, listeners, right? <laughs> and he really was. He was there. He was like, this is sweet. But like, <laughs> like that part, too, like, always like, oh, you got to yeah. think that, that, God has a sense of humor. He you does have, have a to, sense right? of humor. Absolutely. So, he like, does. the first time someone said Pound Town, you probably, he was like, yeah, they said it. Right. You know, like, <laughs> I created he's, that. <laughs> he's that guy. Right. Yeah. And, and we always, like, everybody's always like, oh, no, he's just this perfect deity thing. Right. And I'm thinking, like, that's not, that's not who I think he is. If he made me, he knows how screwed up I am. He's got to have a sense of humor. He does have a sense of humor. I think, but it also, it's like, you know, he created it. He, he's perfect. He is perfect, but okay. the same, in the same token, like part of perfection is that ability to have the sense of humor. Absolutely. Like, and so like, I look at that, I'm like, oh yeah, so I'm perfect too. No, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> but, Sweet. <laughs> but no, like I sex, like purity culture, I do, do think like it has ruined it for some people, especially when their parents are super heavy handed 
on the section. We're not going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Talking about it's a sin. Looking, thinking about it's a sin. You're going to go to hell if you masturbate. The like, more you do that, the more, though, the yeah, more you yeah. make it enticing. Almost it, it creates more. It creates more curiosity. Yeah. And, and I and I can say this, and I know that it's this way, and it's not just Mormons, but like we knew in college, there was a term for a certain type of Mormon. There was Jack and Molly's, right? Jack Mormon, Molly Mormons. Jack Mormon was like the one that was like, I'm going to go to church on Sunday, you know, do my Mormon thing, go to whatever seminary during the week. But Friday night, Saturday night, let loose. I mean, it's like the joke is, you know, why do you take, why do you take two Mormons fishing with you? So you take one, he drinks all your beer. Hmm. But like, <laughs> but together they yeah, monitor together each other. They, together they keep that. each other accountable, but, right? I mean, like, and that's, that's another episode and about that's community. A lot of, like, <laughs> yeah. And we're not we're not insulting Mormons. We're just saying, dude, there's a lot. This of is an example that we yeah. had, right? And so the Molly Mormons were the super perfect ones, but the Molly Mormons, when it came to like physical stuff, they were the ones that were like picking off my buddies. Like they would sleep with one, and then all of a sudden their date, they had them to date, and then they had to get married. But the, and there's terms called soaking. Yeah, there, I'm I'm learning a lot of stuff on TikTok. Oh, dude, it's yeah. <laughs> on TikTok, and I don't want to go off on Mormons. But like, we're not, but yeah. there's, there's just, and every, every I mean, religion has Jehovah's it, Witnesses. You could go. The Christianity has the yeah. Everybody's got. We their all own. have that. Yeah. I mean, Catholics have like toxic stuff related to sex too, and I mean, you go into the confession side of things and everything else too. But like, we don't want to be free like the French, but we don't want to be extreme like the. You need to give it its place. Like, sex pilgrims? needs to have its place, right? Yeah. It needs to have. It does have its place. And you have to give it its value and you have to like be firm about that and understand that the value that it has, has a place and it has a time. Be firm about it. Every time. <laughs> See, I love how we're just like going connotations through this. <laughs> Every time we come across one, it's like we have to stop and let it soak. Um, <laughs> let it soak longer, Ryan. <laughs> stop. <laughs> I don't want to beat, beat the dead horse here. Um, <laughs> don't beat it. <laughs> but no, like... Thoughts and views on sex that a parent may have or try to convey to their kids are going to be clouded by the prism of that personal view of sex at that current like thought or action. What your parents are into, what you guys are into, you're going to transfer to your kids. Yep, so that's what I'm trying to say. You want your daughter with a mouth gag and a ball gag or a Yuck. spanking or whatever. Wow. I mean, <laughs> dude, come on. But no, no I but get it. Yeah, 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 no. but, you know, if, you, if you are super open about having multiple partners coming over to your house, um, with your kids home or they know about it, you're super open about your sex life with your kids, which is also unhealthy. Um, uh, to an extent, like they're going to mimic those behaviors and they might magnify them. They're going to think, well, if my mom, mom, you know, or dad, like they're 40, they're kind of square or whatever. They're 45 and they're still, you know, getting at it. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, my dad was with like two chicks this month. I'm going to try to be with eight. Like, there's some sort of like anti with some of these younger guys. Like you get to a stage that it's like, you're trying to one upsmanship. Let's remember that we don't always become our parents, no. which is true. Right. And I'm, I'm putting this out there because I know that people are gonna be like, no, no, no. There are some kids that will really fall in line with us. And there are some kids that will go, I'm going to take only the good things that I see from my parents Yeah, because I don't parent like my mom. Oh. And she didn't parent like her mom. I don't right? parent like my parents. I mean, I, there's things that my parents did. That I think are awesome but there's i i'm different to an extent with things yeah. but i mean it just it's it's one of those pieces so try not to let your bad seed <clears throat> fall to your children freaking geez we can't do this <laughs> sorry <laughs> Where's the, we just need a michael scott button for this entire episode oh, that's Lord. what she said um you guys know what we're saying though but yeah like no you can't let your faults transfer to your kids you have to be careful in in how you convey your business around them um because i think that also too much of a good thing is not necessarily a good thing too so if you're like way too open about sex and like that's not necessarily healthy either yeah so like there's a lot that goes boundaries with this but the boundaries are why, more boundaries why we've hit like two episodes in a row they just i think it's the core of parenting yeah. I'm just going to go there. And there's no perfect, there's no right way, there's no whatever. We're just giving you little hints to go, hey, we need to make sure we're having these conversations because we, if you care about your kids, you have to have the conversation. Absolutely. Don't don't hold off because you think you need to be pure about it. It's not how it works. Yep. So uh, we should end it there because we're think, just going to keep yep. talking about hitting it hard and going there. So I want to thank our sponsor. Patriot. We yeah. love Patriot. We love oh Patriot. Yeah. So if your adolescent teenage boy smells like crap, 
Hose dragger. Right there. Get him some of that Patriot Men Company. Get him some hose dragger. Yeah. That stuff's so good. I love Angry it. Angry Charlie. Yeah. That's another good one. Cheap dog. Dude, Fubar is so delicious Fubar, too. Yeah. Fubar is so delicious. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Patriot Men. Patriot Men for sure. Yeah. Hit them up. But uh, for episode, uh, season two, episode six on the YouTube. I'm right. Hey, don't forget to yeah. like and smash the button. Yeah. Please Follow subscribe. Us. Subscribe, yeah, please. Yeah. Share, share us, man. I Absolutely. mean, help us reach other people. And then if, comment. Let us know what you guys' thoughts are. If, yeah, you, have, if, if you don't agree, let us tell us. We want to know. If you've got like three minutes, you can go to Apple Podcasts. There's a way to inflate your numbers. Rate, subscribe, unsubscribe, re-rate, and subscribe again. That is a lot of work. Well, if you do that, twelve. I mean, that's just like per one person you count as two. No, <laughs> but I, it's a way no of idea. falsely inflating our numbers. No, but I mean, the reality <laughs> is it's... Help us out. Get yeah. us out there. Um, get more people. And, and like I said, I mean, comment. If you disagree, if you have other advice, comment. We love responding to people. We yep. really enjoy chatting, so we don't mind at all. Yeah. So uh, but, um, I'm Ryan. I'm Tristan. We'll see you next week. You have a great one.